If you're a youth baseball coach, I know that you know that the dugout is a place where anything can happen. On a good day, it's a place where your entire team can be up on the fence next to each other, cheering their hearts out for their teammates on the field. But on a not so good day, it's a place that can be full of distractions and off task behavior. Lucky for us coaches, there's something that we can do about those not so good days. Today's bullpen bulletin is for coaches, and I'm discussing why having a clear set of dugout rules will help keep your players engaged in the game and limit off task behavior. Hey team, Coach Hart here with Building Better Baseball, the best place for baseball education. First, I'd like to welcome all new teammates who are finding the channel for the first time. It's great to have you and welcome to the team. If you're a youth baseball player or a coach and you'd like to learn more about baseball and improve your game, then be sure to tune in every week for the weekly Bullpen Bulletin. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you my free guides that all players and coaches must have. But for now, we're going to keep your dugout a lively place with no distractions. The first thing we'll discuss today is why we should have dugout rules. I've been around baseball for a long time, and I can tell you that there's only two types of dugouts. There's a controlled dugout and an uncontrolled dugout. A controlled dugout is a dugout with discipline, where every player is always engaged in the game no matter what the situation is. Their team could be losing by 10 runs, and the dugout still has every player up on the fence cheering for their team. You don't see anyone on their phones, no one is sitting down having side conversations for the whole half inning, and you certainly don't see players leave the dugout unless they're going to the bathroom. Another thing that you don't see in a dugout with discipline is parents. Now I know this point might get a little backlash, but it's true, parents can be a huge distraction for youth players. In an uncontrolled dugout with a lack of discipline, the first thing you'll see is the whole team looking lazy with everyone sitting on the bench. Their version of cheering for their team is taking a moment to pull away from a side conversation or look up from their phone and say a random, let's go Steven, or nice try Luke, and then it's right back to what they were doing. There's a complete lack of focus on the game. You'll see parents coming up to the dugout to have full conversations with their player during the game that have nothing to do with the game. Or even worse, the parent will go inside the dugout to talk to their player. This type of dugout is just a recipe for consistent frustration for the coach and losses for the team. As a coach, the most important thing that you can do for your team to ensure your team's chance of success is to have a clear set of dugout rules. They can be whatever you want them to be. If you only want there to be one rule and then rule number two is don't forget rule number one, then that works for you. If you want to write out a list of about seven to ten rules and then keep them posted in the dugout for every game, then that works for you. Having a set of rules for the dugout will make sure that your team knows that the dugout is not a place to slack off or lose focus. It's a place for you to cheer for your team, stay engaged in the game, and rest a bit while you have the chance. Having dugout rules will shift your team's mindset from a let's take a break and lose focus mindset to a let's do what we need to do to stay engaged winning mindset. The second thing we'll discuss today is my example rules for the dugout. When I coached, I had a set of five rules for my team every season and they never changed. And I created them after I crafted my coaching philosophy. They were rules that I believed would keep my team focused and engaged in the game while also bringing my team closer together with everyone having a team mindset instead of a me mindset. My dugout rules are listed below and these are just an example and you're more than welcome to adopt these rules for your team if you'd like. My number one rule, have a team mindset and not a me mindset. Ask yourself, how can I help my team right now? This rule is the most important rule in my eyes. A team cannot be successful if it's full of individual me mindsets. It's called a team for a reason. You all are one unit working together to accomplish one goal and that's to win games and have fun. This rule was always first and foremost with my team and my whole entire team understood. Rule number two, no phones in the dugout. This rule to me is a no-brainer, and I think it's a little concerning that I even had to make it a rule on my list, but you'd be surprised at how many players can't stay off their phones during a whole baseball game. Phones are not meant to be used during baseball, games, or practices. This was a strict rule for me, and my players knew the consequences if I ever saw a phone in the dugout. Rule number three, no parents in the dugout. This is a rule that I always discussed with my parents during the preseason parent meeting. 
They were all aware of the rule before the season started. And luckily, they were all for it. Obviously, if there was something really important to tell their player, they could talk to them. This rule was mainly trying to avoid parents hanging around or in the dugout and distracting the players. They needed to focus on the game, not on the pool party that was happening after. Rule number four, every player must be standing on the fence and cheering for their team when we're hitting. And if you're sitting, you're the loudest person cheering. If you're a player on my team, then you cheer for your team, no matter what. That's how team camaraderie is built, and that's how players show support for each other. I understand that there are situations where players may have to sit on the bench, whether it be from injury or taking a quick rest or whatever, but the one thing that should never take a rest on the field is your voice and your cheering. Rule number five, pick up every player that walks back into the dugout from the field and say something positive. No matter what a player did on the field, they're still your teammate. You need to pick them up every time that they come into the dugout from the field. They could have just grounded into an inning-ending double play or hit a grand slam home run. No matter what, you need to pick them up when they walk back into the dugout and say something positive. This rule was a huge component in changing my team's mindset from just an overall pessimistic, we can never win mindset to an optimistic mindset of, it's okay, we'll get them next time. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this video. Do you have any dugout rules for your team? And if so, what are they? Leave a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Before we go, I'd like to point you down to the description area for my free guides. There's a free baseball equipment guide that explains every piece of equipment that we use in baseball and it tells you how to find your perfect fit for a glove, a bat, and everything else. There's also a free two-hour practice plan for coaches who'd like some help with making the most of the limited time that they have on the field. I'm here to help you be the best you can be on the field. Be sure to grab your free guide down below. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope this video gave you some ideas on how to keep your bench focused during the game and how you can help your team have a team mindset instead of a me mindset. I'll catch you next week for another edition of the Bullpen Bulletin.